We are so back. Welcome, one and all, to the FC25 Port Vale career mode. I know, I know, I said it in the past that I would not do another Port Vale career mode, but you know what? It's the only way that I know how to come back. So we're doing a Port Vale career mode and we're doing it properly. I have had a little play around with this like last night just to see, you know, the new menus, a bit of gameplay, just how the game feels and stuff like that. And I feel like I'm now ready to be able to bring a video to you guys. And I guess I'm going to start off with the settings of this career mode because obviously there's so many new settings to go through and so many to sort of let you guys know about because I like being transparent with you guys and I'm just going to say it right now, I am here to have fun, okay? So if there's some settings that you may think that, you know, might think that I've made it too easy for myself, sim simply put, I want to have fun doing this. That is the that is the only thing that I've based these settings off. So we've got four minutes and a half. I am starting a difficulty on Legendary. I played two games last night and won both of them 1-0. So that's better than I normally do on Legendary. If we play any youth tournament matches, which I probably will, um, they'll be three minutes long. The quality of the players in those matches will be their current overall and not their full potential because I really do not get the point in that setting at all. We are going to try out the simulation gameplay settings. So they are preset sliders by the developers and as you can see they are different to what you might normally see we're keeping with training plans except I'm using the automated ones this time because I feel like manual control of those just takes up a lot of time I did not mean to put the recovery rates on light I wanted to keep those as normal but here we are, unfortunately. Player training drills are off. I've never played them in my life. And the development rate for senior players and youth players, I have just kept at normal. I was considering putting this development rate for senior players on fast or the faster one so that they de develop quicker, I guess. But at the same time, I didn't want that to break the game. So I just left them both at normal for safety. This is probably the biggest one. I have disabled the first transfer window. Reason for that, we have a massive squad at Port Vale and I want to be able to play with all of the players up until January to gauge which ones to keep and which ones to get rid of. No transfer embargo, de default negotiations, loose approaches, scouting off. So when we get scout report, well, not even when we get scout reports, when we get players in the reports, we, all, we will already know their overall and stats. That's a big thing for me. I've never liked the global transfer network and the ability to switch it off is huge. Board expectations, I've gone for no sacking simply because I do not want to be playing this save thinking that I might get sacked every time I lose a game. I don't want to get to a point of no return where I've saved the game and then I get sacked like two days later in game and that's it, the series is over then. International job offers are off. That's a mouthful. I initially, I thought that was the old setting where you just enabled them in the first season. No. If I turned that off, there would have been no European competitions in the whole save. So then here we are in the career mode main menu. And I love the fact that you have a task list in front of you to tell you what to do. So then this is the team. And if I just go down here, you can see why I've disabled the first transfer window. We have a huge huge squad and at the moment I've put us in 4-4-1-1 formation because we seem to be thriving in that formation in real life at the moment or at least a 4-2-3-1 anyway the reason I've made it 4-4-1-1 is because Byers and Garrity our sentiments. Now, the new tactics, which I absolutely love. It introduces roles into the game. It's one of my favorite bits of doing tactics in Football Manager. So bringing it into FC is huge for me. And at the moment, this is what we're going with. So the tactical preset is custom. The only reason it's custom is because I've edited the roles to a point where it's not really a tactical preset anymore. Our build-up style is counter, so it's going to be sort of longer balls, I guess. I'm ch I've tried to sort of not necessarily mimic, but do something like we do in real life. And our defensive approach, approach is aggressive at the moment. Now, I think initially I selected pressing, and that's why the defensive approach is so aggressive. And as you can see, what I've tried to do just at the start is put everyone in a role that they are comfortable in. So Ripley is a sweeper keeper, Sang wing back, Deborah defender, Connor Hall is a ball playing defender, Kyle John is not a left back at the moment. I'm going to convert into one, so that's why 
he's not comfortable, but I'm pretty sure if you stick him at right back, he can do wing back. Same with Ronan Curtis with wide playmaker. He can't play as a right mid, but he, he's good at, good at it on the left. Garrity is box to box. Garrity has always been a box to box midfielder. George Byers will stay back and be a deep line playmaker. Benicio, winger all day. Ethan Chislett is a playmaker who is roaming. He's always everywhere. And Lauren Tolaj as an advanced forward. And that's kind of like the main first team squad I'm going to use. Um, as you can see, that is how we look without the ball. And this is how we look with the ball. It's a 3-4-3. Three, three. At least apparently. Anyway, it didn't look like that when I did the, did the last night. <laughs> We've also got some players already in our youth academy. And oh boy, have we got some good ones. Now, there is an issue at the moment with the goalkeepers. And as you can see, their diving stat is not representative of a goalkeeper whatsoever. The rest of these lot, Howard, these have all been generated into my youth squad. I've not signed up any of these. These are these were all here when I opened the save. So we come into the scout network and this guy, Holden, was generated. He was there already when I loaded the save. He's five star, five star. I don't know if that's anything to do with the fact I pre-ordered the game. It probably is. And obviously, of course, we can take these scouts to so many more countries over 160 countries i think it is now we're gonna go for northern europe and we're gonna send him to england for nine months and now with sending scouts out you can select positions and that is it you you don't select like physically strong playmaker technically gifted all that kind of stuff now you just select the position and you can select up to four of them you know what yeah let's just go straight down the middle center back center mid cam striker they are what we're looking for in England for nine months. You can actually select the roles as well. That's really cool. We're going to send him to Burundi. We're going to look just for wingers and send you to Wales. Three months and you are going to look for defenders, my friend. Now, I did sort out development plans last night before I started the save. I wanted to have everything sorted before I started recording, basically. So James Plant is going to become a right back instead of a left back because he is right footed. And speaking of uh, going from one side to the other, Kyle John is going to become a left back instead. And then Ronan Curtis is going to be a right mid. So most of the press conference questions now are based on players and not really about the team. So in in this example it says Lewis Makari has led the defensive line beautifully in the past matches do you think that Lauren Tolage has what it takes to get past him and come out on top and I can humble Tolage I can celebrate his form even though he's not really played encourage and downplay humbling is the bad option basically um, but at the same time the morale has got a sweet spot and you don't want to get it over that sweet spot So Notts County are playing at five at the back of course because every team plays five at the back now I mean, I'm not gonna complain. We've played it for the best part of the last three or four years They've got so many key players though. Oh my days. Jody Jones is a key defensive and attacking player apparently Benicio is absolutely dead. So it's Jack Shorrock's time to shine I think other than that first team is looking really good. So let's go I just want to point out, by the way, how good a job that EA have done with the new um, tool that they've got for creating the faces, the cranium, I think it's called. That's Connor Ripley. Like, if I just if I just keep going through the players here, like, the players actually look like the players. That's such a good render of Connor Hall. One thing I have to laugh at, though, is the fact that Ben Garrity's hair is just entirely grey. Like, don't get me wrong, his hair is going grey and he knows it. He jokes, he's joked about it all the time, but the fact that on this game, his hair is literally grey. That's Ethan Chislett. That's amazing. And that is a pretty decent looking Laurent Tolage as well. So fair flip in play, EA, because this is, I, I love the fact that finally my club's players now have not their literal actual faces in the game, but a very close likeness. Because we've never had anything like this before. Is Ronan Curtis. Cheers. Good touch there. Is Ethan Chisley still going? Nice. Play it in. Ronan Curtis. You know what? Have a shot. Ooh. Saved by the keeper. And it's cleared away. Love that. Laurent. Laurent Tolage. He's left footed, I think, in the game. He's both footed in real life. Oh, keeper saves it and somehow manages to keep hold. Cheers. Nice. Shorrock. Great ball in. Ronan Curtis, damn it. Oh, Shorrock steals it again. He's got it as well. Shorrock inside. Laurent Tolage. Oh, he saved it again. Slocum. Saving everything right now. Right, cheers on the corner. Now, I've got Connor Hall as the target player. I don't know where he is. Is it him here? It is, yes. Connor Hall. Yes. The first goal of the series is scored by the returning Connor Hall. 
Fantastic, lovely ball in by Chislett. And I'll tell you what, I mean, Connor Hall as the target player has certainly worked a treat there. It is a bit of a new challenge, this, because going into this first season, we have one of the best teams in the league in terms of overall, in terms of just in general. We've got one of the biggest squads, one of the favourites to get promoted in real life. So it's an entirely new challenge. We've got to, in this first season, kind of expect to do well as opposed to build, you know, use it as a building season. So if you like see me winning a lot of games from the outset, whether that'll happen or not, I don't know, then don't think it's too easy. We have one of the best squads in the league. Connor Hall winning it really high up the pitch. Here is Laurent Tolage. Cheers now for Ronan Curtis having a go. Slocum with another save. Notts County can't really deal with us right now. Jack Shorrock, one of our academy products, playing it back. Cheers. Chisler is everywhere, by the way. His roaming position really coming into effect. He played in the box. Tolage couldn't um, sort his feet out. Well then, there we go. End of the first game, and it's a win and a clean sheet. You absolutely love to see it. The tactic felt good, I'm not going to lie, but obviously, it's only the first game. And sometimes the first game can be very deceiving, so I'm not going to start celebrating just yet that we're going to have a successful season, but let's hope for it. Oh, I see. Okay, so now I've been... I've been training Rico Richards as an inside forward, and he's not he's not got a plus on it yet, but if I apply it now, yes, he can do inside forward now. I like that. Same with Chislett with Playmaker. He's now a Playmaker plus plus. Get in. So by definition, by the game now, he is world class as a Playmaker. <laughs> so there's one thing I wanted to address, which I just thought about while I was playing the last game, and that is Benicio. In real life, he is on loan as from Brighton. In the game, he's not. He is our player. And if I'm going to be completely honest, I'm going to take full advantage of that. Because at the end of the day, the game's done a stupid and thought that he is actually our player when he is not. He's 20 years old and he's got quite a lot of potential. So I'm taking full advantage and keeping him at the club. Oh, well, this is weird. Um, first game in the Carabao Cup and we are playing Blackpool of all teams. Oh, get in! A 4-3 win on penalties over Blackpool. League 1 opposition. So we have got this home game against Tranmere and I am going to simulate this one because I'm going to try and just get three games in but try and finish the month off. So the first team is going to go into this game at home to Tranmere. We drew 0-0 in real life. We lose 2-1 in FC. Got role updates now. Jakobsen in the Youth Academy is now a stopper plus plus. I feel like it's going to be quite easy to get players to be very good at the roles that they're in. So Accrington are a kick and rush. They have an attack rating of 55. That's not great. So next game then, Accrington away from home. And this is the game that we're actually playing this weekend when this episode will be uploaded. So let's give some good luck to the squad for tomorrow because I'm recording this on the 20th. Kyle John with a lovely ball there. Here is Benicio, my first use of Benicio, playing over the top. Laura Talaj, he's put it wide. And it actually went through the net. I like the way that Chislett and Curtis are working together. It's kind of like Chislett's roaming so that when Chislett leaves the centre, Curtis kind of covers him. It's really, really good. And then if we're attacking, then Sang bombs forward and covers where Curtis was. It's it's actually really good. It does leave a, a gap at right back, but if we're attacking, what does that matter? But, oh, Chis is injured. Bloody hell. Ethan Chislett still got an injury at the moment, playing it through. Talaj. Here he goes. He's trying to make some space, playing it to Chislett, and he's hit it wide. John's done well to keep that. Here is Benicio. Now here is Ben Garrity playing it through. Rory Payton. Oh, over the top. Rory's in. Rory Payton to win it. Yes! I say to win it. It's only the 82nd minute, but Rory Payton gets in. Lovely one-two between the two substitutes, Rory Payton and Diamond Edwards. And it's Rory that finishes it off at the near post. Keeper. Oh, headed away. Still might come to something, though. Coyle. Oh, Ripley. Yes, he's got it. I think we're going to get the 1-0 win again. Yes, we are. Two wins and a loss, of course, in a sim uh, simulated game to start off this season so far. Look at how his overalls displayed there. I don't know why I find that so funny. I really thought I could have made a difference against Accrington Stanley, Accrington Stanley. Great England there, Dan Jones. Why are you calling me Accrington Stanley? That's not my name. How was Connor Ripley named out of the match? He didn't do anything. Another match day, this time it is the Carabao Cup again. And this time we've got Peterborough at home. Once again, I'm gonna quick sim this because I'm not really too fussed about the cup competitions. And this time we have been knocked out. 
2-1. Kwame Poku and Abraham Odo with the goals for Peterborough. Jaden Stockley in the first minute for us. Final match then, we are playing MK Dons at home and I've made one change to the team. The scorer of the winning goal against Accrington, Rory Payton, gets a start. Um, obviously, of course, we've got the wind effect on and that's lovely straight away from... Uh, Benicio, great ball in, Curtis, saved by the goalkeeper, we nearly scored straight away. Well, I'm fine, Connor, all's big head, in fact, no, it's going to come to Ronan Curtis again, what's he doing winning all the headers? Play inside, cheers, oh, I skipped past them like, he's, like they're not there, give it to Peyton is where I wanted that pass to go, here we go, Byers, over the top, Peyton making the run, oh, still might have a chance here, oh, Jesus, right, okay, we still might have a chance though, Cheers. Oh, I was about to smash that. Oh, that's a nice ball if it actually reaches. Oh, that is skimming quite a lot, but it might stop. No. Oh, it has stopped. It stopped. Liko's got there. And he's found a cross all the way to white. And that is, yeah, in the end, fizzled out into nothing. Oh, Liko is absolutely... He's free on this side. Kyle John was too far up there. Jonathan Liko doesn't want to cross it. Schultz... He does cross it, albeit not into the box. Oh, no way. Oh, what a save, Connor Ripley. How Niman found that much space, I will never know. Oh, Peyton's stolen it. That's got to be 1-0. No. You know what? Have a hit. Why the hell not? Saved by the keeper. Vinicio's going to get to that. Chip it back in. That's too far. He does that in real life as well. It's quite... Um, it's quite realistic at the moment, Benicio's crossing. Then again, he also plays on the right as an inside forward, so he doesn't cross quite that much. Oh, Neman's got the better of Sang there, and he's got so much speed as well. Come on, Jesse, get in there. Yeah! Liko's through again here. They've got really quick players who can get in behind. Liko, Neman, I think Hendry's got a bit. Time's ticking, one last push. Uh, pressing, three, four, one, two. Here we go. And now it's showing, it's showing the tactical change on the pitch. That's really cool. Garrity's through. It's already made the tactical change. Oh my god. <laughs> that is unbelievable. I can't believe what I've just witnessed there. That was super effective. It's actually changed the players and put them in actual like positions that they play. Look at what it did. It, it put Curtis as an advance forward. Chiss stayed as a playmaker. Connor Hall in the middle as the ball playing defender with Deborah and John as stoppers. That's so, so good. I'm going to have a lot of fun with these tactics, I am. Oh, Carol, do you know what he's worth? Ben Garrett, he's the best on earth. Oh, what a tackle to end that off. And get it out of there, Benicio. We didn't even get a chance to make the substitutions, but it doesn't matter. It's a third 1-0 win, which means that all five games I've played on this on this new FC25 game, I've won all five of them 1-0. It's fine, though. As long as we keep getting the wins and keep getting the clean sheets, I am not going to complain. There is the best on earth. Do we not get emails for the scout reports anymore? Okay, I'm going to have to be wary of that. Don't have the financial means to pull these offers are oh no i've just realized how astronomical the wages are wow and i could say oh my god hello harrison nichols so it looks like the name pool for burundi is not great that's what i was trying that's what i wanted to see that's why i went to a country like burundi i wanted to see what the name pool was like it looks like we're probably going to get quite a few DNGs. Oh, I see. Our current budget is currently 24,000. And we have a weekly wage budget of 563 quid. We might have to be more ruthless here with the uh, youth players then. If I release David Woods, because I don't mind about releasing him. He's only 14 years old, so he's not going to be in... He's probably not going to reach the first team. I'm going to be real. If I release David Woods... Was he taking up wages or am I going to have to release actual first team players here? Okay, right. The wages are astronomical. We're going to have to really, really be careful with our money here and be really ruthless with these youth players. But anyways, guys, that is going to end off this first episode of the Port Vale career mode on FC25. I hope you guys have enjoyed it and I hope you're excited for more. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe if you like what you see and you want to see more. And if you don't want to miss a video, then hit that little bell. It's somewhere near to the subscribe button. I don't know if it's still next to it anymore. I've got no idea where it is. But um, hit the bell. It's down there somewhere. You'll get a notification whenever I upload. And then if you set it to all notifications, you'll get a notification every single time that I upload. But until next time, thanks so much for watching. Peace.